Welcome everyone, they call me IntraTechOut and at the moment there aren't too many tutorials in Dreams. As a result, it's really easy to miss mechanics, gadgets, features and shortcuts. That's why this video I hope to cover as many of these things as possible to hopefully help you improve your Dreams workflow. I think this will be a really useful video whether you're a complete noob to Dreams or a level 122 superstar like me. Do please keep in mind that these will be based on my personal experience. Some of these hidden features will be really obscure and some of them kind of obvious. The only thing they'll share is that I didn't immediately figure them out. Of course, I don't know everything and I'm sure there are still so many hidden features in Dream that I could make 5 other videos at least, so if there is something you figured out but didn't hear this video, please put it in the comments. Let's try to learn as much as possible from each other. I will start with some of the bigger things that most dreamers probably know by now and slowly work my way to the really obscure button combinations little tricks. So let's start with some things that you should know even before playing dreams really. First of all, uploading. When you've made something you're proud of, like a game or a piece of art, you probably want as many people as possible to see it. That's why you should always make your creation a dream before uploading instead of just uploading the scene you've created. The reason is that the dream surfing page that you get to from the main menu only shows dreams, not elements or scenes. Most players will search for things to play and experience here, not in the slightly hidden browse and create. To make your scene a dream, just go to start fresh, choose dream and add whatever scene you've created. Use X to connect your scene to the start and end of a dream or string multiple scenes together. The second feature that's slightly hidden but extremely important is the sculpture detail tool. I still way too often see people asking for help because their graphics thermo has reached 100% with only a couple things in the scene. To make things less graphically demanding, just select this tool and start clicking away on everything that's unnecessarily detailed. Only the sound and especially the gameplay thermo are going to be your bottlenecks in dreams, because to lower them you actually need to delete things. This is not the case with graphics because of the sculpture detail tool. Important to keep in mind with this tool is that it doesn't change the actual looseness of sculpts even though the effect is the same. That's why you should always use the detail tool to increase looseness because if you just increase looseness with the tweak menu or style mode, the object in question doesn't actually become less thermo demanding. But so far the big surface level stuff. Let's take a dive, shall we? The next hidden feature is fall distance. One of the first things I made in dreams was a game called Collision Course. I didn't make this a dream at the time because I didn't know how that worked, so barely anyone has played it as a result and maybe that's a good thing. But Collision Course was inspired by a Halo Reach custom game where you have to make your way up a ramp while objects get hurled at you. One problem I had is that the puppet the player controls would respawn way too easily. If you jumped down a ramp for example, Dreams would way too quickly think you've fallen off the world and respawn you even though you would have landed on solid ground. I ended up fixing the issue by creating an invisible kill barrier under the level but that's actually a way easier solution. If you take a global settings gadget and place it in your scene, you're able to change this fallen off map height along with other interesting things like gravity. But let's now talk about some hidden button combinations. The first thing that comes to mind is that you can quickly switch between smear mode and stamp mode with L1 plus triangle if you're using a DualShock 4. I personally almost always use stamp mode because I like the amount of control it gives me and because you can use the blend feature. But sculpt mode always defaults to smear mode at the start. This button combination prevents you from having to manually switch pages and select stamp mode every time you want to use it. Next hidden button combination, double tapping X. This is really handy and can spare you a lot of time. Double tapping X selects everything in any given group. So if you for example have 100 cubes grouped together and you want to make them all movable, just double tap X on any of them and you can tweak all of them at the same time. Also, if you double tap X on the object and you're not scoped into a group, this will select every single thing you're seeing. This can be really handy if you need to move your entire level for one reason or another. It doesn't end here though. Double tapping X also allows you to select all child objects of any given parent object that are connected via a connector. So if you double tap X on the hand of a puppet, it will do nothing. If you double tap X on the lower arm, it will select the lower arm and the hand. If you double tap X on the upper arm, it will select the upper arm, lower arm and hand, etc. If you want to select every body part of a puppet at the same time, double tap X on the pelvis. But wait, there's more. Double tapping X on a piece of logic in a microchip or timeline will select every single piece of logic that is in that same chip. This can be really handy if you for example want to make your music come from a specific direction in a scene. Now you can instantly select every instrument in a song and make them all emit their sound via a specific speaker.
Talking about selecting stuff in music, if you only want to select one row of notes in an instrument, use the combination L1 plus X on a key on the left to only select that specific row. This can also be used in drum kits. Next button combination, if you're using the grid, you can use L1 plus triangle to link it to any object in your scene. This is a bit obvious of course, because this button combination is constantly displayed on screen, but what isn't obvious is that you can reset the grid to its original position with the same button combination. Just don't hover over an object while pressing L1 plus triangle. Now onto something else, the power button. Something you might not know is that you can deactivate logic, sculpts, gadgets, pretty much anything by pressing the power button in their tweak menus. This can come in real handy in all kinds of situations. Maybe you want to test your level for example, but you're tired of watching the minute long opening cutscene every time you activate play mode. Now you can just turn off the timeline and play immediately. The same thing is possible for objects. You can even use logic to activate the power of an object. This can be used if you for example want enemies in your scene that shouldn't move until the player has come close. In the case of enemies I'd use emitters though, but that's beside the point in this case. Uh, on the topic of emitters, when you select an object to emit, you've probably noticed that the object in question becomes transparent. Maybe you thought that this was just an effect to signify that the object is being used by an emitter, but that's actually not the case. The real reason why the object becomes transparent is because Dreams automatically turns off the power button of any group or object you choose to emit. Just tweak it and temporarily activate the power again if the transparency makes it hard to accurately edit the object. If you keep the power on during gameplay, the object will just act like any other object with a power button on, but usually when you use an emitter for something you don't actually want that. The same thing also counts for keyframes by the way. If you make a new keyframe, it doesn't immediately become active during gameplay, because the power button has to be manually activated. For the remainder of this video I will go a bit quicker. Here are some more things you might not have known. 1. You can tweak the slow power up and down of a keyframe and fade of instruments inside a timeline by dragging on the dots on the corners. This way you can synchronize fades easier to other things in the timeline. 2. You can also tweak the slow power up and down of a keyframe by connecting it to a position wire, like a timer output one. This way you can extend the power up and down way beyond 5 seconds. 3. If you activate this show sidebar option in a tweak menu of a timeline, it's possible to activate and deactivate entire rows of your timeline. 4. When making music, you can actually put instruments inside other instruments, so you can play multiple instruments at a time. 5. Also when making music, you can play chords by using the chord feature found in the tools bar and you can also use the arpeggiator to automatically play a melody when holding a single note. These are both really handy because they allow you to experiment with the overall tone of a song really efficiently. 6. There's also a feature to draw notes inside instruments if you didn't know. It can be found on the tools bar. 7. You can cycle through tags inside sensor gadgets by using the D-pad. I do believe this only works if you've already used the tag somewhere else on your level though. 8. If you deactivate fairy speed inside a sound effect, lowering the pitch of it won't change its speed. 9. You can reset sliders and settings inside gadgets to their original value by pressing triangle on them. 10. Inside instruments and sound effect gadgets, you can give sliders a range instead of a set value by holding L1 and dragging the slider. If you do this with a volume for example, an instrument will now choose a random volume in the range you selected with every note played. And 11. When working on an animation with keyframes, you can quickly move from keyframe to keyframe with L1 plus the D-pad. This button combination is also displayed on screen, but by now you understand that it's really easy to miss these despite that fact. But that was pretty much everything I wanted to mention this video. I hope I was able to show you some new things and I encourage you to present your own hidden mechanics, features and shortcuts in the comments, so we can all learn from them. Before I end though, a quick thank you for 400 subscribers. It's really cool to see the channel grow even though I upload with extreme irregularity. I really appreciate the support. I honestly don't know though what the future will bring. Dreams will launch in a month which could either propel this channel to even greater heights or leave me behind in the dust. Or maybe nothing will change, which is definitely a possibility considering there still hasn't really been any marketing for dreams. Now I do want to quickly explain why I'm so irregular with uploading, even though I know it doesn't bother most of you. It's really simple actually. I like quality. Everything I make, whether it be in dreams or on YouTube, I want it all to be of a certain quality level. And this probably sounds hilariously self-aggrandizing, considering the quality I put on this channel is not particularly high or anything. 
But I do hope you've noticed I like to put as much thought and effort into these as possible. I want most of these videos to be more than tutorials, I want them to be lessons that can be applied to more than one specific thing. This does mean I run out of good ideas for videos constantly. The same thing counts for the commentary videos I make on other topics like the age ratings one or the watchdogs critique. The decision if I'll even make a video is completely dependent on the ideas for videos I have. As a result, I simply don't upload often. I am considering to start streaming dreams, I've already set up a Twitch for it, but I also need some good ideas for that because I don't want to stream myself working on AI for 5 hours. But whatever, that's enough about me for today. So now I've set the record straight on that extremely controversial topic I could no longer ignore. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.